Here we have Laura, yet yeah, another victim of <laughs> the COVID lifestyle and doing our own hair because we get bored and we also want change. And we start to feel a little bit frumpy when we're locked away for months at a time. And so we start to experiment on ourselves and that's perfectly fine. Today, we're gonna kind of bring this back to the salon reality of a haircut. She also uses extensions and clip-ins. So we're going to get those to blend out and make them look like they're really her hair. That's the point, right? So let's work on that today. The first thing that we have to do is make certain that the natural hair is actually connecting to the extension hair and make it look as flawless as possible. One of the biggest things about extensions is when they don't take the time to cut them. I feel like a lot of people are scared to cut something they've just spent so much money on. But to me, it's not a complete service unless they're blended and look like they don't exist. So we're gonna start by just allowing this hair to lay at natural fall and kind of looking at where the natural hair lays versus where the extensions come out from underneath and lay. We're also going to address the bottom, which is another thing that I think a lot of people are afraid of. They spend money on extensions and, and buy a certain length and then think that they shouldn't cut it. To me, this makes the hair look very unnatural and we want this to look as natural as possible. So I'm gonna start out by using my Hattori Hanzo HH155. Now mind you, I'm a left-hander. This is a right-handed scissor, but because the scissor isn't used like a typical scissor is used, it's very easy to get away with getting it to work for you and not against you. Although the blades are reversed, it really makes no difference because you're only using where the blades come together. This is not a section cutting shear. This is a shear with a large belly on it and allows for effortless sliding through the hair. Whether you're working vertically or horizontally, you're gonna win either way with this. The key is, is be gentle and let the hair speak to you as you move. So we're going to take this at natural fall and we're going to start to look at where that layer falls. We're going to start to grab those sections and hold it down slightly, elevating it at about 20 degrees. We're going to come through and we're going to start to just move through that section. Now, if you notice, the big difference between this and what most people experience when they're slide cutting is the fact that I could close that down once as I moved and it was effortless the whole time. If you're trying to slide cut through dry hair, especially hair with extensions or blonde hair, where we're always concerned with not compromising the integrity of the cuticle any more than has to be in order to get the desired color effect, we want to make certain that we're not feeling vibration. In layman's terms, if you're feeling a lot of vibration as you're moving through the hair, that's you raking open cuticle, damaging the hair that they just spent an atrocious amount of money putting in. So grabbing that next section, and I just want to move through it the same way. And you can start to see immediately that the layer is going to start falling a lot softer and have a lot more movement through there. You want to let the scissor do the work for you. Don't fight the scissor, don't push the scissor. And if you're starting to feel vibration, try changing the angle of the scissor a little bit. This is a tool that can be very, very easy for you, but sometimes a little bit complicated for people to learn how to use because we get in a hurry and we want the results that we see other people doing without the practice that those people did. You have to practice with a tool like this. But ever since I've learned how to use this tool, it has been an absolute game changer in my salon services. It allows me to feel like an artist again. And if we're being really honest, we all know what long blonde hair people want. All the results with no cutting at all. If you've been noticing, I'm not taking an atrocious amount of hair by any means. So I get to win by being the artist and creating the movement that I'm looking for. And the client wins as well, because when they look down on the ground at the end of the service, they don't see a bunch of hair laying there, which is the biggest no-no for blonde haired people. So you can start to see a lot more movement now on this side, and you can see that the layers are just falling effortlessly 
and endlessly as we're moving forward. Now, doesn't that look much more like a human head of hair? Now to address the elephant in the room and any head of extensions, and that's the heaviness of the top layer laying against the endless layering that we just created. This is a simple, simple fix, and I utilize this next technique often in clients, especially my clients that have grayer hair, and they're getting color services, that gray hair is a lot more porous and a lot more hard. It wants to push out of the scalp and it creates a lot more singularity in the hair. And I know that we've all battled this before. It's that layer that is laying there and we try to pick it up and point cut it and point cut it and point cut it. And no matter how much we do it, we can't seem to get that top layer to dissipate from the hair. So let's figure out how to hide that together. So I'm gonna use my Hattori Hanzo 2T. This texturizer has 27 teeth and it has a curved spine and all of the teeth are curved. The beautiful thing about this texturizer and whether I'm using it in a longer head of hair or I'm using it in shorter hair is the effortless blending that it creates. It's not too aggressive with visual texture and it's not as aggressively blending as say a barber's texturizer, which in my opinion has entirely too many teeth to bury deeply into any long head of hair. It always looks good that day, but the fragmenting that I see being created the next day and then every day following until the next service is a little bit too much. It starts to look like flyaways. This is your happy medium in between it. On the other end of the spectrum, if any of you have ever tried to blend out a child's head of hair that's blonde and you've seen all the results of the lines from your blender, it's because it's based on a straight line here and all of the teeth are completely straight. What that does is create kind of a comb effect and you can see where that starts to create those lines. It's always been a nightmare for all of us, but because of how this is designed and the fact that our teeth system is on the bottom of the shear, it's going to actually wrap around that hair as it's coming up when you're closing the texturizer, giving a much softer, more subtle blend, and it's also never going to create that horizontal line because it doesn't have one. It has a bent line. So we're simply gonna take the apex of the head and we're gonna take a small circle from this section. We're gonna bring this up, and we're gonna wrap it until it's tight. We're gonna come up into just the top section of the hair, and we're gonna close the texturizer down twice. What that allows for is a very, very soft, subtle top layer and a beautiful cascading effect that breaks up that top line. So this technique can be used over and over and over again. The next thing that I noticed or that stood out to me right away was when I pulled the hair forward, I noticed the disconnection from her natural hair into the extension hair. This is very, very common and a very, very easy fix. We're gonna go back to that HH1 or the Kamikaze dry cutter. And we're gonna do a little bit of sliding through here to create a little bit more face framing and a little bit more movement through the front section. Also blending out that natural hair into the extensions, resulting in the most natural look we could possibly produce with hair extensions. Just using our hands, come right from the fringe area and down over the top of the ear. And we're gonna bring this forward. Working with extensions is a little bit different and the less we can use a comb, the better. So we wanna just kind of polish that out with our fingers until we get that section vertically in our hands and we can see where that natural hair lies. We're gonna allow that to fall out of the hand. We're gonna come in with that dry cutter and we're just going to simply start to slide and carve through that, creating a lot more movement and frame in that section. If you have to do it multiple times to get the desired results, do so. 
As long as you are stroking the hair really, really gently with this, it'll never take too much hair. But you can start to see where that framing is cascading down now. And you can definitely see a lot more movement. If you choose to use a comb, you can. Just make certain that you're pulling that hair out and away from first, then taking your comb and letting it fall as natural as possible into the comb, bringing it out to see the top edge of this section. I'm going to come in and I'm just going to, again, lightly stroke through there, pointing the scissor down towards the end of the hair as we go, and you can start to see how that's going to frame out that face a lot more and give a lot more shape. Beautiful. It really, really brings out the shape of her face well. Now let's address the heaviness of the fringe. This is so, so common. We see this all the time where the fringe is so heavy and it wants to fall forward and collapse into the face as opposed to being married into the rest of the haircut. In order to do this, and being that she has a very, very light blonde hair color, I want to make certain that I'm using the proper texturizers to not damage that hair anymore. So I'm going to choose to use a carbon texturizer because our carbon steel is designed more for work in dry hair. Not only is it going to hold the edge a lot better for the tool, it's also going to give a lot easier glide to the hair itself. We want to make sure that we never are feeling a lot of vibration as we're moving through that hair. For this particular technique, I'm going to use the HH88 Hanzo's brand new texturizer. There's a lot of things I absolutely love about this texturizer. One is that it does not have an offset handle and it has two tangs. The reason for this is because short hair does push long hair in certain instances. So being able to close the texturizer this way or roll it over and close it the opposite way is going to help me to control which way the hair lays and how the hair rolls whether it rolls under or up. Anytime you're using a texturizer like this, and I use these a ton, especially when I'm cutting my bobs because I can get through a bob so much faster, creating a soft, subtle, blunt line, which is exactly what everybody's looking for right now. You have to make certain that wherever you want the hair to roll, you have the blade with no teeth underneath. If you have it underneath and you close that down, it's gonna cause the hair to pull in. If you flip it out the other way, it's going to cause the hair to, to come out. So without even cutting a new fringe on her, I want you to all watch this amazing effect and how it starts to lighten things up and marry the fringe into the hair. We're going to go off of the natural parting and we're going to take a vertical section in the fringe. We're going to bring this opposite the way it naturally wants to live and we're going to make certain that we roll this over to where this blade is underneath. The reason for that is because I need to weave through this fringe in order to give it a variation of lengths within the shape currently here. So I'm going to push down first and then I'm going to weave through here like we would a baby light. Two of the key ingredients to this is A, making certain that we're leaving the first and last strand out of the scissor always. We never want to put a short piece at the beginning or the end only within. This maximizes the control of the hair. I'm going to close that down and I'm going to back comb that towards the head. I know that looks scary to a lot of you, but mind you, these are a carbon based tool. They slide through dry blonde hair effortlessly. So I usually do that twice and then I start to slide my fingers out of the hair and continue to back comb as I move out. Next vertical section of fringe bringing it back over to that stationary hand position and making certain that I'm weaving through here. With this particular application, I want to make sure that I'm keeping my blades parallel to the side of the head, closing and back combing. The reason I'm keeping it parallel to the side of the head is because it's allowing for a little bit more short piece in the back of the fringe, a little longer in the front which is exactly the shape that we're looking for, but it's also going to maximize the control that I have.
last section. And what we're going to see right away is control. If you remember when we started, her fringe laid the opposite way. It's not that I want her fringe to lay this way, but I want you to see how much this technique and this tool can maximize the control on a fringe. It literally gives her effortless way to, ways to be able to wear this now because A, the ends are lighter, but B, we've created somewhat of a basket weave effect into this fringe, meaning we've cut long and short pieces and wrapped it around an oval object of which it lives on. The long links that we left out lay down. The shorter links, these are the long links, the shorter links weave right in and lock together, lightening up the fringe and also helping it to lock into the rest of the haircut. So you can see how much softer the fringe is now and how much movement she's getting in that fringe. It literally marries effortlessly into the hair. Let's go ahead and give her fringe a little bit more life. We're gonna cut a little bit more layer into this fringe because obviously when we're COVID cutting, we don't always know to cut a layer in. Sometimes people are just pulling their things over and cutting them clean off, resulting in a very blunt, heavy fringe. So we're gonna use the 88 T1 to bounce cut this because that's going to give me my cut and my softness all at once. I won't have to do any point cutting at the end. Bounce cutting is very simple. If you learn to hold the scissor, shifting it forward and just hooking your thumb into the, the curve or the crease of the handle, it allows you to have a very, very soft hold on this scissor and it allows you to smack it against your fingers, close and come out at the same time. I can get a lot of work done in a very short amount with a tool like this. So I'm gonna take that vertical section. I'm going to palm her head so I can mimic that shape and then start to slide out until I get to the shortest point of the fringe would be the underneath. I'm going to then come in and I'm just going to close and cut at the same time. I'm going to use a stationary guide and keep taking vertical sections up to that stationary guide to get the proper travel for this fringe. Now we see a much softer, more swept fringe. Let's add a little bit of additional texture and travel by just simply putting the texturizer down. We're gonna close it and slide. This will soften up that fringe and allow a lot more subtle fall to it. Now I simply wanna bring this out and just start to lay that texturizer in those ends. I want to make sure now that I roll the texturizer over backwards. And that's the brilliance in how these particular texturizers were built. The fact that I can reverse them and utilize them to my advantage at all times helps in the final result of every service. And we're just going to close and slide as we move out and soften that whole shape out. Over on the other side, we want to do the same thing. We're going to take a vertical parting, we're going to bring it up and over, and make certain that it's matching. As you can see, we don't have much to cut here. Putting the layer back in allows us to give a little bit of additional volume to the fringe without the client having to work so hard at it. I'm always adamant about doing as much as I can with my tools before the client leaves. This results in minimal maintenance on a daily basis, which makes me priceless to the client. Anytime someone can shake it and go, the more they love us. Again, on the other side, just grabbing a little bit of the edge of the hair and making sure that I'm marrying that texture into these longer links. rolling the texturizer back over again and coming through.
giving a very, very subtle face frame. Coming to the other side and doing the exact same thing. Again, because I'm on the other side, I want to roll that texturizer back over again. When I'm cutting perimeters on long lengths, whether it be extensions or otherwise, I prefer to always have my clients stand up. I don't feel like we ever get true natural fall when the client's sitting in the chair, the shoulder position is different, and we're always working against the back of the chair. Let's eliminate that. Stand them up, turn the cape around, roll the cape forward and clip it nice and tight to the body. This will give us true body shape and true natural fall. Now that we've done that, we can assess the back of the hair. This is something that we see often where the extensions start to run into one another in collision in, instead of in cooperation. So we want to make sure that we marry all of this together as well. And we're going to take the ends off of here because of heat styling and things like that. Extensions tip, tend to get a little tattered at the bottom. Anytime I feel my comb stopping in the hair, that usually tells me about where I need to take it to keep it or bring it back to a healthy manner. So we're going to go back to our HH155, also known as the Kamikaze, because we want to slide through the edges of here, creating a little bit more shape and a little bit more fluidness. We brought it all back to the back. We're going to comb it straight down and then we're simply going to find where it starts, lay the scissor right against the body and close down as we move. And you can see how easy this carves that new shape out and effortlessly. And again, if you're anything like me in the past, I used to always try to hold the hair with my hand and cut it with a scissor. And it always looked great until I let go. And we've all been there. You get those little teensy stair steps that you're back in there trying to trim off again. So we're gonna come to the other side and do the exact same thing. I've always said that this tool is the one thing that makes me feel like I have an artist's brush in my hand while I'm cutting hair. I can create so much fluctuation in my dimension just by how I'm using the scissor. You can actually do a, even a balayage effect with something like this simply by sliding V's into the hair, which is exactly what a balayage is, right? Offset V's of color, which creates a lot more fluctuation and dimension. So let's carve out this other side and get this new shape in here. Lastly, we want to just clean up this bottom edge. The easiest way to go about this when you want to create a slight curve to things is to have the client put their head down their natural head shape is going to pull the back of the hair up farther than the sides. So when you cut a straight line across here and they put their head back down, well, you'll see. So we want to make sure that we stand down on this and make sure that our fixed blade is behind the work. We're going to come across and decide what the line needs to look like. And we're going to cut this straight. making the connection. So when the client puts their head back in a normal position, you can see the slight bevel at the bottom of the haircut, resulting in a beautiful, blunt, but light end. And then we just need to marry our new line to the sides by simply sliding through that edge. So I'm sure you can see in a short amount of time with the proper tools, how quickly we've taken her from COVID living back to reality. Thank you for having me. I'm Colin Martin with Hattori Hanzo Shears.